Ask Reddit by Deleted. What do people learn to late? To protect their ears, you don't want to live with tinnitus for the rest of your life because you were exposed to loud noise once. Learn this one to late. I can ignore it most of the time, but some nights. Setting and respecting boundaries, how to give a genuine apology, and other such communication 101 skills. Take care of your teeth. People still don't believe me when I say that bad teeth can easily lead to cardiac arrest. Deleted. There are many more factors to that. Is this a job you really like? If you are making more money, but hate the job, is it really worth it? You are spending most of your day and your life at hat place. If that part of your life sucks, it will affect your mood and happiness a lot. And close to that, the work atmosphere. Are you getting along with your colleagues? Is your boss a decent person? The social part plays a big role and is often ignored. The importance of writing skills for formal contexts. Writing is an important skill in nearly any field and the more a career advances the more important it becomes. The lack of adequate writing skill often holds back a career. Yet many people squander their opportunities to learn writing because they think their class assignments are empty busy work and they figure their skills in spoken English and informal text messages will carry over when they need to write for work. I work in it and write emails all goddamn day. We work each other's support tickets so I have to read emails my co-workers sent to clients and goddamn do people slaughter the English language. Also if I hear leave a message and I will get back to you at my earliest convenience one more time I'm going to lose my fucking mind. How dangerous driving a car can be. This is very very true. I survived two car accidents without any scratch, in three months. Drive safe and remember just because you have priority way, it doesn't mean that they will give it to you pay attention. Sometimes letting go of your priority is the way to avoid an accident. Edit, by priority way I meant right of way. I didn't know how was it called in English so I written how I would say it in my language. That the cliche you never know when it's the last time you'll see to someone should absolutely be remembered for every occasion. My best friend just died in a car accident this past Saturday, and the last time I saw him we got in an argument and he left and we didn't speak after that. I'm destroyed by it. Edit, thank you all so much for the support and for the awards. I do have a great support circle outside of this. But all these replies and condolences really shows the empathy complete strangers can have. My grandpa passed away two weeks ago from cancer. We flew to Saskatchewan, where he lives, and managed to see him. I talked with him and gave him a hug. Before we left, I had the feeling that I was never seeing him again. I snuck back into the room and gave him one last hug and told him that I will miss him. He died six hours later. I'm so grateful for whatever it was that told me to see him one last time before we went home. What not to share on the internet. I am so grateful that my party years of 1323 occurred in a pre-camera phone era. How to manage their finances. Lesson number one. Dollar sign 1000 is not a lot to have, but it's a lot to owe. That you might be wrong sometimes. Some never learn. Edit, change late to you. I've discovered that my nature is to never accept that I'm wrong. I will give excuses, argue, but not accept. I've made it a resolution this year to just accept it when I'm wrong. That happiness usually comes from a diverse range of interests, hobbies, and commitments. You are not your job. Your romantic partner cannot be your everything, etc. It's so easy to get sucked into a life where your career is everything or where you wrap your entire identity around your partner. There is nothing wrong with celebrating your loved ones and being close. And there is nothing wrong with caring about your job, you just need more to thrive. I see this so often in relationships. Two people meet and fall in love. They each inspire one another based on their interests and achievements. It's part of what makes them fall in love. But slowly, over time, 
They let those hobbies go. Stress gets in the way. Bills pile up. And then one day they find themselves wondering why they ever loved this person in the first place. Instead of being sexy and interesting they're just part of a roué. TLER. Diversify your interests and activities to be happy. Don't rely on a single person, hobby, or commitment to give you everything you need. Weave the tapestry of your life with many threads phrasier. Sitting on your ass all day is not good for your health at all. Rolls over onto stomach instead. That no is a complete sentence. Don't get in the habit of auto-launching explanations and defenses oftentimes. The people listening will ignore all that anyway and just hear but here's an opportunity to dissuade me. Look how hard I'm working to get your approval to say no to you. What do I do when every time I say no I'm being told I have to reply with more words? The value of a good unconditional friend. Had the same best friend since I was two. Don't know where I'd be without her. Deleted. But thank you for your contribution to this platform. How to communicate. Not communicating with my wife almost destroyed my marriage. I'm finally learning to tell my wife how I feel. Mistakes have consequences. Sometimes they are huge consequences, such as a mistake while driving could kill yourself or someone else. Sometimes they are little consequences. But always learn from your mistakes and that you should always be learning and improving yourself. Can you milk me, Foka? The value of walking away from someone toxic in your life, even if it is your parents and family. If you are thinking of it and are scared and have somewhere where you can land in a safe place, then do it. It hurts like hell for a long while, but it gets better and one day you realize how peaceful your life is and you find you only miss the family you wish you had had. Yes. Also, find a support net but for your own sanity, just avoid the topic with people who are curious. Not many people understand and will try to talk you into making up with your family. It's so hard in the beginning but it gets much easier. You find your own people, create your own families, and your own peace. That it's never too late to learn. You really whipped out the reverse there. To appreciate their youth. I do, but on the flip side it makes me terrified of aging. That they are terrible at parenting. Too late and won't admit it. Saying I love you or wanting to reach out to your family, friends, and loved ones, but crippling anxiety stops you. You never know when it may be too late to say these things, so be in the moment, and live love in the present authentically. Also, to learn the difference between saying I love you as a statement, and saying I love you but really meaning do you love me? It's fine to switch the real meaning from time to time, everyone needs a little occasional reassurance, but if all my I love you utterances come from the latter, and especially the first one in a romantic relationship, I need to do some work of myself if I hope to have any quality relationships in my life. Don't ever think it's okay to talk to yourself in a manner you wouldn't let another human being talk to you. The biggest abuser I ever had in my life was my constant companion, the thoughts in my head. We often take care to choose our words when correcting a child or friend, but if anyone had talked to me, the way I talked to me for 30 straight fucking years, I would have murdered them, and probably got away with it too. Be nice to yourself, you're the only you, you have. My brain after reading that yeah be nicer to yourself you stupid fuck. Interest rates, credit cards, credit score, money saving techniques, 401k. In other words anything that keeps you from being trapped by poor money management. I straight up had to go out of my way to take a personal finance class to learn half of this shit and that was like 2 months ago and I already forgot most of it. A cat on his back inviting a chesty rub is a trap. Nothing can stop me from trying. How slippery a slope addiction is. 
how quickly trying something at a party turns into being hooked. Nicotine is a bitch. I know it's awful for me and my lungs but I just keep on going back. Learning when to say no. Learning how to apologize when it's your fault, and how to not apologize when it's not your fault. I am absolutely guilty of the latter. Me, standing in line the grocery store. Guy, walks up, shoves me aside and grabs some gum. Me, oh, sorry. My mom, why are you apologizing? This guy just walked up, shoved you out of the way and grabbed something he didn't need when he could have just asked nicely. Me, a, reflex. I don't really care either way. I should probably stop doing that. That it's possible to do everything fucking right and still lose. Just life in it. Edit I didn't know that was from Star Trek. I just know it from a comment on reddit 6 months ago and shit is true. Chav P. Car. That cutting toward yourself is a bad idea. That cutting yourself is a bad idea. How to not give a fuck about how others see you. Seems simple enough for me now in my 20s, but back in high school there were many fucks given about how others saw me. Ironically, those people that didn't care how others saw them were often the more respected ones. Edit, sorry I should clarify, it's more about how to not give too many fucks, not none at all. This is more about when you worry too much about what you're wearing, only saying what's cool, only being seen with the cool people, only listening to the music that will make you seem cool. If, for example, you are 16 and already onto your 8th boyfriend and all your friends are telling you to focus on other things besides boys, then you definitely should give a fuck about what they think. Also, there's a difference between not caring what people think and being a shit sucking taint monkey. Don't be an asshole and try to pretend you are just telling it like it is. Not everyone is going to like you, no matter how hard you try. You could be the juiciest peach in existence, full of flavor. Yet there will still be those who don't like peaches. The importance of education. As a kid you're always hear generic statements like, this will help your career but nothing specific enough to be useful. I feel this hard with math. There's a lot of things I learned in high school that are now super useful in third year engineering classes, but I had no idea why I needed to learn it at the time. That hating people who are different makes you nothing but unhappy. Wow isn't that the truth. That's being wrong and changing your mind is actually nothing to be ashamed of. Edit. Now I finally get to write that sentence too. Thanks for the award kind stranger. To not stick. Insert object. Into. Insert different. Dangerous object. Do not stick hand in mouth alligator, got it. The view from halfway down. A shitload of the lessons in Bojack Horseman would apply in this. That friendships and relationships should never be so difficult to be in that it drains you of joy or throws you into depression. And if you are that depressed friend that keeps losing connections with meaningful people, it's never too early to get help. Even if you think you can beat it, it's temporary, or you don't deserve it. Toxicity in any person is inevitable as people grow and change. What separates the toxic people from others is that they refuse to or are unable to recognize their own toxic patterns and cannot change their toxic behaviors when they negatively impact others. And learn your own issues. Do self work. You're always going to be better for it. Pulling out is not an effective method for birth control. Don't be silly, wrap your willy. Don't be a dick, put yours away. These sayings can prevent unplanned pregnancy. The deflector shield will be quite operational. But my friends will be arriving soon. That nobody will be a better advocate for you than yourself. Especially when it comes to your health. Mental and physical health. 
don't wait for somebody else to do it. You'll have to do it yourself eventually. To stop being afraid of asking or pursuing the things you want in life. Save your goddamn money. Edit, nearly 70% of Americans have less than $1,000 stashed away, according to GoBankingRate's 2019 savings survey. That's goddamn wrong. Their limits when it comes to drinking alcohol. Failure happens and it's part of a learning process. Never be afraid of failing. In the same line being wrong about something and changing your mind is okay. That it's more important to appreciate your body for what it can do rather than what it looks like. It can bust open the buttons on my pants since quarantine started. How short life is. To be fair, this quote generally has the tendency to encourage behaviors that make life even shorter. Deleted. How to emotionally regulate what? Would you fucking answer? That you can't stop me. Alright fine I'll start you instead. Knowing when to not be nice. That being mean to people will get you nowhere. On a personal level, I complete agree. Unfortunately the cynic in me has seen far too many assholes doing well in life to know this isn't necessarily true.